welcome to another impartial theorist. Today we've got uh, just trying to keep up with Donald Trump pretty much. Um, his uh, his comments and opinions have been <laughs> back and wild. forth so much this week. I'm just gonna try to just try to get on the same page. So yeah, first we're starting off with with Trump trying to fuck up the global yeah. economy and give the world to China, which sounds like an overstatement, but Loki is kind of what he's doing. He he's wants to impose a tariff, a 25% tariff on steel and aluminium. And that that's fucking crazy. Because even Ford, like, it's going to affect everything from Ford trucks you Wisconsin people love so much to the beer that you Wisconsin people love so much. Because the prices are going to increase and the only people that are going to pay for that shit is going to be you. Because the companies will have to increase their initial cost. But if they manage to sell the shit to you, you're going to be paying the increase in the tariff. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you. It's going to make your money worth less. It's going to increase inflation. It's basically going to fuck up a lot of shit. Just because he wants a couple st steel, steel CEOs to make some money. Yeah, and so you have uh, automotive. Um, the, the president of the American International Automotive Automobile Dealers Association said this couldn't come at a worse time. Uh, the president of the American Automotive Policy Council said that this is bad because car manufacturers can't afford yeah. to pick up a price. Yeah. Boat oh. manufacturers, same thing. Uh, beer industry says about 2 million jobs depend on the beer industry. And... They're urging the president to consider the impact it could have. Yeah, and the beer industry is important because um, Miller Miller Coors, the people who make Coors Light and then Miller Miller Light, they said most most brewers, because the demand for beer is always on the rise, and they they started changing most of their stuff from bottle to because nobody really wants to buy like a twelve pack of bottles if you could just buy a sixteen pack of of cans it's cheaper for them and it's cheaper for you so they make most things in aluminium and if the aluminium prices increase they're gonna have to lay off people because the prices the, the cost is gonna rise and the price the, the price of the beer is gonna rise too so you're gonna suffer and they're gonna suffer and trump just doubled down on this shit and he's basically saying he, he, he screamed tweeted if you don't have steel you don't have a country and that a trade war trade wars are easy trade wars are good trade wars are not easy by the way yeah, yeah, I thought that was, that seemed to be pretty baffling to most economists that I've heard talk yeah. about it as like, trade war is easy, where where do you it's, get off? It's gonna fuck that? up so much, because he's, he talks about the auto industry move, making shit in Mexico and stuff, unless unless they include in a bill that, because he, he's already tried to get them to move back and forward, they gave him like a gesture of like, we're gonna keep making the Ford something, I think Fiesta here. Which was yeah. just like a little part of Ford's business. Because Ford isn't just an American company, it's a multinational. Those Fords have been built in the UK for years. Ford had a Bowden in, in Australia. Like, they're literally all over the fucking world. And so they just gave him this little gesture of one, one car model. But if he does this, they're going to be forced to make everything outside. And then import it into the US. And just pay those slightly lower tariffs instead of paying, instead of paying this high 25% tariff of steel. And... One, I forget who it was. Uh, fuck. One of Trump's people tried to try to explain it off by saying that that twenty that steel is that only like one percent of steel, no, only less than ten percent of of the cost of manufacturing cars is in steel, and this is only going to raise twenty five percent. So it's only going to affect the the cost by one percent or so. Which, even though I've butchered the math, trust me, his math his his yeah his math too is kind of bad. Even though I butchered this shit, it doesn't even matter because his math was still that bad. It's already the Dow Jones dropped. The only people, the only people who are actually making money on this shit, whose stock values are increasing, are steel companies, steel and aluminium companies. Because M M Miller pointed out that they don't even have the supply. They don't, the U.S. companies don't even have supply to meet the demand of just the beer companies. The, the Asian and European markets have been like fluctuating like crazy like up and down because this Trump just literally just sparked turmoil in the middle of the day he, he just uprooted all the he just uprooted these markets for no reason just to satisfy some steel and aluminium 
CEOs who want to make a little bit money, a little bit more money. Yeah, and I mean, <coughs> I guess this is, uh, well, yeah, like we're talking about, it, it's kind of like, um, this is maybe a, one of his campaign promises, something, and like that is, I know, like a conservative talking point, or at least a Trump talking point in his campaign was that like America's a bad negotiator and other countries are taking advantage of us and so like this is kind of like one of his moves to to show the world well but he's giving the world to china because china makes a shit on they, they produce a shit on of steel and aluminium and who the fuck do you think they're gonna buy it from now because in in trade wars when you put a tariff on something they put a tariff on some on on your shit back like that's how a trade war is that's 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 basically what a trade war is. It's just war war of the tar- of the tariffs. Basically, like making put, putting this um incentives to make people not buy your shit. And now that he started this, Europe is gonna ret- retaliate harder. And who the fuck are they gonna buy the shit from? They're gonna buy it from Europe. They're gonna buy other shit from Europe, not just steel. I said Europe, China. And he pissed Canada off too. Because he's basically making it more expensive for the close, the close China, um, said China, Canada steel to be imported into America. Yeah, well, I heard there was like some people in Congress or something that were gonna ask for like an exception for Canada because yeah, they're like our yeah. neighbor. And they, and they import more steel to the U.S. than any other country, so it's gonna uproot that economy there too. It's gonna fuck with everybody. So. Moving on to Trump's next illusion, he's. Continuing the the NRA's point that that movies and video games are corrupting the youth more than guns because of the gratuitous sh- like GTA and shit. Basically, they're, they're bringing back that stupid ass GTA like controversy that happened way back in the 2000s, and that shit was put in in at the supreme when they took it to the Supreme Court. It was it was voted that video games are are covered under the First Amendment. So they so basically what Trump is trying to do is is usurp the first the first amendment for the second one he's 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 val- he basically saying he values the second amendment over the first amendment so you won't have your free speech unless we get to get our guns and if if your free speech is impending out is is it's just something we can throw away in order to keep our guns we're gonna do that which oh yeah and so i guess sarah huckabee sanders his press sec- secretary said he's planning to meet with members of the video game industry but they didn't like say who those would be but um apparently there was nobody because the video game industry said that they don't there's no meeting yeah well that's what i'm saying it didn't she didn't say who or what meeting it would be like she just said that there would be a meeting um so if it's even gonna happen uh um Researchers in, in the video game field um, said they were unaware of any sort of upcoming meetings by the White House. And the Entertainment Software Association released like a, a press briefing, like PDF thing, basically just um, um, disproving everything that he's saying. Saying that, that like, with average, we'll put it up on the screen, with average gamer age, like, the, the amount that percentage of parents present when their parent when their children purchase a video game which means they approve of the shit percentage of parents who who watch the children play the video games and basically saying that it, it doesn't have any like clear like effect on children and their and violent tendencies basically just disproving that shit that he said yeah and i mean i don't know i guess like i don't know if the White House is going to go through with that, like, whatever, I mean... Who is he like, meeting, I though? Think gonna... I think he believes he has a meeting. Yeah. But who? Is is he meeting some people that the NRA set up? Or, <laughs> like, who the fuck is he meeting? Because he, he's... The entertainment, um... The ESA, which is, like, the video game, like... Count, I would say council or, like, regulating body. Yeah. Basically said none of the people <coughs> in the association have heard anything about it. So yeah. not, none of the video game industry. So who are the stakeholders or shareholders, whatever he said? I don't know. Maybe he's just going to talk like some parents. Well, some, some concerned parents. Moving on My to the next. plays too much video games. Yeah. 
Well, the Take next crazy thing that you said, which is like number three of like 200 things you said this week that we can't keep track of, is that he's not afraid of the NRA. He said that he said that at a White House at a White House gathering, and he actually blamed. He, he, well, yeah, first he called out uh, Toomey, Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey. Uh, he, he called him out for being uh, afraid of the NRA. But that's not true because Pat Toomey hasn't taken any money from from the NRA ever since he got into Senate. And he yeah. only took 120000 So even if he has in the past, he hasn't really since. Well, yeah, and like what Trump took like 30 million or yeah. something from but he i kind of believe trump when he says he's not beholden to them not not because he's actually scared of them or anything but i think he 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 needs their fan base and if he thinks that is that that fan base can be thrown under the bus for for a bigger one he's gonna do that shit yeah and that's probably why the nra had to have a meeting with him and remind him what he stands to lose Cause, well, yeah, and so that just is like, so shortly after he said that he's not afraid of the NRA, it was like, what, the next day or the next, that night, um, he met with the NRA, yeah, and like, now and the, the NRA office. officials are saying that Trump isn't supporting any more gun control, yeah. so. But there's been no confirmation of that, at least when we recorded, so. But it kind of just adds to the theory that Trump just... But he Goes did, with whatever he hears he did most tweet recently. This, so uh, he said good parentheses, great meeting in the Oval Office tonight with the NRA. Which yeah, he tweeted that shit. I don't know what the fuck it's supposed to mean. I get what it's supposed to mean. I'm just saying So yeah, and then we also yeah. saw in that meeting with uh <clears throat> congressional leaders him saying going as far as to say, take the guns. Yeah. Like in which was like crazy. red flag ca- or like in due process he said fuck due process yeah. take the guns and then do due process which honestly straight up i support because yeah <laughs> nah if, i just it would be abused so easily yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the only thing yeah, yeah. so that's that's like, yeah in theory like it's a great fucking idea if but i guess so i understand why people don't it technically does infringe on their second amendment rights I don't give a fuck about the Second Amendment, so shit. I just think it would infringe on your rights in general because yeah. it'd be like anybody could just say, "Oh, this guy has guns," and the next thing you know, like the police come and like search your house and take everything yeah. that they think is a weapon. And then I don't. I think do I don't know. I would just have to hear more about it. But just like yeah, hearing throw due process out the window just off the bat is gonna get me too excited. Yeah. For the- that is the kind of shit the NRA should be fighting for. So. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, and, our, and that's that's the thing. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's just that's, like that's like the most like kind of extreme yeah. like. Yeah, but in, a, in actually, even most liberals in, like don't support. Yeah, that, yeah, so. yeah. Most no, most, nobody's asking for that. <laughs> but in in which why would he say that? Because he's just gonna weird out his fan his supporter base. But like in a perfect world, the NRA would be there to stop people from infringing on their rights. In in and their rights should be sensible, like. A sensible, like simple, non 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 riddle with loophole. Fucking like the Second Amendment shouldn't be so vague. That's that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. If the Second Amendment wasn't so vague, it would stop liberals from taking away the guns of the of the NRA fucking people, and maybe that would help. But in this in this case, the NRA already go way beyond what they're supposed to do. Like, yeah, they got the shit unlocked. I yeah, mean, they're... like they they they're doing they're doing way better than the other side. It's supposed to be like yin and yang and make that shit balance, but yeah, nah. The NRA is like all the way over here, and the Democrats are like here, and this this is the range. So that's pretty fucking small. Yeah, well, I think that's what we got to talk about today. <laughs>